we are here mindful uh, of this slow-moving disaster, which has presented itself anew, particularly here in the state of California, uh, through extremes, extreme heat, extreme drought, extreme weather. Uh, and we're here mindful of our role and responsibility to do more and do better. But I uh, also am mindful that we're here in California, and I want to just take the opportunity to brag a little bit. A state of dreamers, of doers, of innovators, a state that long has prided itself on being on the leading and cutting edge of new ideas. Here we are in the Bay Area, uh, the source of so much energy and innovation, literally and figuratively, a stone's throw away from Palo Alto. We love to say about this region, the future happens here first. And as it relates to the issue of climate change, we are also mindful of our role and responsibility to address it. And so much of, I think, what makes California unique and special is demonstrably exampled in the work we have done to tackle head-on the issue of climate change. California has produced roughly one out of every four clean energy jobs in America, 27 percent. This state prides itself, again, on being on the leading and cutting edge of this transition. And we're proving we can do it and grow our economy. But we need to do it with remarkably talented people, and we need to create an energy and a framework to create a generation of doers, not just dreamers. And that's why it's my honor to introduce uh, one of those doers uh, who's part of this remarkable program that we established a few years ago called the California Climate Corps. In the spirit, Mr. President, of Sarge Shriver, uh, in the spirit of our time, uh, we say it often, uh, the happiest people in the world are those that volunteer. The tallest people are those that bend down on one knee to help lift other people up. And to see the energy, the passion, and action of these young people displayed all across the state of California uh, that just haven't gotten the memo. Uh, they don't buy into the cynicism, the negativity, and the fear, and the division. Um, in so many ways, they're the antidote to all of that. Uh, and China uh, is one of those remarkable young leaders. Uh, that's taking her action and passion locally and is driving change uh, and inspiring others throughout the state of California. And so I couldn't be more honored uh, to have the privilege of introducing China, who will be introducing you appropriately, uh, Mr. President. Welcome back to the great state of California. Uh, and it's my honor to introduce China Tai. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here. Uh, my name is China Tai. I'm a 2019 UC Riverside graduate. I majored in sustainability studies and grew interested in uh, community-led climate advocacy. I currently serve as an AmeriCorps member and a California Climate Action Corps fellow at White Pony Express, an organization that is committed to aiding those in need we help combat climate change and fight food insecurity by diverting fresh, healthy foods from landfills and redistributing it to underserved communities. In other words, we're rescuing surplus food and giving it to the people most in need. Our work also has another important benefit. When we reduce the edible surplus food from ending up in landfills, we're also reducing methane, a harmful pollutant that is a major driver in the climate crisis. Our work took on a new meaning during the recent spate of punishable storms in California, when we helped the unhoused by giving them tarps and other necessities, that is a part of us taking action and helping those in need. So you see, Californians live in the consequential crisis of the climate. Climate change affects us all, and it disproportionately affects those that are most vulnerable. For my generation, this is the issue of our time. So that's why I am so proud that we have a commander in chief that believes this to his core. He has taken bold climate action since day one by securing the most consequential climate legislation in history. He has been a powerful leader in the fight against climate change, and the future generations will be better for it, here in California and all across America. 
It is my honor to introduce President Joe Biden. Well, thank you, China, for that introduction. Governor Newsom, I tell you what, it's nice to be here, as you said, working on something that's a positive thing going forward and not fixing something that happened very, very badly. We spent a lot of time in helicopters flying over areas that needed help. And thanks to all the climate leaders that are here today. You know, uh, we just visited the salt marsh, as you saw. We walked down to the end of the Safer Bay project. And a public-private partnership that's harnessing the nature of our ability to do what this young woman in China did. You know, one of the, I always say, I've never, and I mean it sincerely, I've been around a long time in public life. I got elected when I was about your age. I was 28 years old. And you know what? I, I've never been more optimistic. You and I were talking about that privately. I swear to God, I've never been more optimistic in my life. And the reason I'm optimistic is because of this generation. It's the best educated, the most engaged, the most involved, and the most consequential. They're in. They're in. The governor was telling me about when they announced the program, there's 3,000 slots and about 10,000 people immediately signed on, tried to sign on. Folks, the impacts we're seeing in climate change are only going to get more frequent and more ferocious and more costly. Last year alone, last year alone, natural disasters in America caused $165 billion in damage. Just last year alone, $165 billion in damage. But the worsening impacts are not inevitable. Building on our incredible effort locally, my administration is doing all we can to help recover and build so we can be prepared and adapt. You know, it's all part of my Invest in America agenda the governor was referencing. It starts with the most significant climate investment law ever, anywhere in the history of the world. And maybe most important, I've committed that we will have conserved 30 percent of all the lands and waters the United States has jurisdiction over and simultaneously reduce emissions to blunt climate impacts. We're on our way. Conservation, land and water, we put more in conservation and land and water than any president in the history of the United States since with John Kennedy. We're leading the way to in Palo Alto and East Palo Alto and to Bellhaven. For instance, a local nonprofit called Climate Resilient Communities gives community thank you. Are you all part of that? Thank you gives members a voice in planning and adaptation. I'm here today to announce that we're putting our critical climate investment to work. Let me close with this. Throughout our history, we're the only nation in the world that has come out of every crisis we've entered stronger than we went into it. We're doing it again here in the climate crisis. When I think of climate, I think of jobs. When I think of climate, I think of innovation. When I think of climate, I think of turning peril into progress. That's why I'm so optimistic about the future. I really am. I just have to remember who in hell we are. We're the United States of America, for God's sake. There's nothing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity if we work together. And that's what all of you are doing here, have been doing, and we're going to continue to do. And God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Let's go get them. Let's get this done.